everybody. Welcome to our Your PD Day. Um, Sherry Jensen here. There's my contact info down below if you ever need to get a hold of me. Um, so here's a little PD video for your Friday and thanks for watching and I hope you're all doing well and we're starting to get in a little bit of a normal world here so that's fantastic. Um, just a, four things that I'm going to walk through really quick just to get you thinking mathematically on your Friday and hopefully give you some things you can use moving forward. Just a reminder, we still have kids coming from online learning, probably not as many going out anymore, but if you have your collaborative curriculum, if you've forgotten about it or haven't checked it lately, you will get a copy of this presentation and you can just click right on this slide here and it'll take you right to it. And you can kind of have a glance as how far kids will be when coming into your classrooms. Um, and that should be helpful. So yeah, so that's your collaborative curriculum. Um, the reason, as you know, why we did it is mainly because of that, is to keep our students on the same page as best we can. And I know it's been difficult because we have some gaps that are showing from our online learning at times, but do the best you can do and try and stay within those parameters. We are coming up to the second half of the year, so we need to start thinking about do the kids really know the things they know when moving into the next grade. So really think about those green outcomes and and maybe what you could reteach here over the last couple months and, and make sure those big rock items are solid. And if at any time you want to talk through that, please give me a shout. Um, so there's are just reasons beyond that. I challenged you a little bit last month, maybe even the month before, to play the game I have you need. If you've forgotten what that is, there is. If you click on that example there, you'll get one in, of an uh, actual class doing it. And there's directions on that other link that you see there but basically what it is it's an instructional routine and I would even start it in kindergarten and you could play I have you need with fives to start with I have two you need and they would say what they need to get to five um, so or then you'd play to ten with a little bit older as kids are solid in five then once they know they're ten partners of ten I would move into a hundred and when you do the hundreds start with tens in to get to 100. So in other words, start with I have 70, you need, and let them come up with 30. I have 20, you need. I have 10, you need. And do it that way until it's completely solid. Then start throwing other num num numbers at them. I would start with fives, like I have 85, you need. I have five, you need. And we're always getting to 100. Once they have those, then I'd move into single digits. I have 81, you need. I have 78, you need, and continue to play that and play that and play that until they get good at it. And I would even talk through their solutions, show them on number lines, ask them about their strategies, how they came up with their answers, um, and just keep playing. Once you think they have their partners of 100, you could even move in with your higher grades to 1,000. Same thing, they'll start with hundreds. I have 800, you need. I have 300 you need, then I would do I have 450 you need and start with the 50s and then move to the 55s and keep going until they are so good at it. And you'll be amazed how quickly kids get good at those routines. Just something fun to play when kids are coming in and out of class or getting organized at the end of the day and cleaning or just sitting in their desk as a warm up. It's a really good routine to work on their number sense. All right. If you've been doing that and you'd like to tell me about it, I'd love you to shoot me an email and tell me how it's going. Um, so we've been talking a lot about number sense, strings or number sense um, in additive thinking over the last few months when I've shared my videos. Just to reiterate, give one more example. Here's an example of a number string. Um, putting that up for kids and just asking them what the answer is and then letting them share how they got it. And I'm sure as kids work through it, you'll have kids that'll add nine and four first and then add six and talk about how they did it, maybe show it on a number line, however they're doing it in their head. But you will have some kids that will add the six and four first and get their 10 and then add the nine. And that's what we want them to look for. We want them to look for those partners of 10. And if you've been playing I have, you need, they're going to recognize those right away. Um, and then we would move into, okay, here's another one. And once they see the easy way some kids did it on the first one, lots of them are going to grab seven and three first and then add the two. Um, same here, same here, same here, same here. Great little problem string. And again, easy to build on, easy to do other examples and make your own. 
Okay, so if you look quickly at my Jamboard here, I just, I know a lot of you use Jamboard. I haven't used it a ton, but I, I do like it. Um, when you're looking here, here's some really for the higher grades, some really cool questions that give deeper thinking. So I'll, again, you'll have this link so you can access this whenever you want. But here's a little deeper level. Rather than just giving them a three digit plus three digit addition, give them this question. So four students solve the same problem using different strategies shown below. Fill in the blanks. What qu questions do you think they were solving? So if you grab a pen or a pencil or if you had that in front of you and you started looking through it, could you think about what would be in those blanks and could you think about the question that they were solving? So pause the video for a minute and see if you can figure these out. And that's the same question for all of them, but what was their train of thought? Okay, so hopefully you paused me and when you get back here and you look at this, let me see if I can write on here easily. So here you can see when I first looked at this, I thought, well, okay, I know they're starting with 165. They added 300 and then came back six. So they must be doing 165 plus 294. Okay, and what a great strategy that. Okay, I have 165. I have to add 294, which is really tricky. So I'm just going to add 300. And that would take me to, I can't write on here very well, but that would take me to 465. And then back up six and you'd be able to get your answer. Sorry, I'm not even going to write on there because my pen doesn't work very well. On the next one, you can see same question. It's just they're thinking of 294 plus 165. So they're starting at 294. They're adding six to get to a friendly number of 300. And they thought, okay, I've already added six, but really I have to add 165. So that means I only have to add 159 more to get to my answer. Okay, so 300 plus 159 is really easy. They could see the answer of 459 written there, as that was the same answer we had up here. So they're all getting you the right answer, and they're all great strategies, but it helps kids see their strategies. Um, this one here, 294, they thought, okay, I'm, I know I have to add 165, so first I'm just going to add 100, and that would take me to 394. And then I'm going to add six more to get to my next friendly number of 400. Well, now I've added 106, so that must mean I have to add 59 more, and I would get to 459. Fantastic thinking. All these ways are great. This one's really neat, the bottom one, because I can see that they're thinking, okay, if I just made this one 300, that means I added six to this one, so I must have to subtract six from the top one. So 165 subtract 6 would be 159. And then that makes it really easy to add, and I get 459. Three-digit addition in four different ways, none of them using the algorithm, all using number sense. Could your kids do that? I don't know. Let them try and see what they come up with. Um, another question that she, that Pam Harris, these, all these examples are from my sessions with Pam Harris. This is a really good relational thinking question and equality. So what numbers could we put in each one of those in order to make this question true? So again, pause the video, try them out, and see how it starts making you think about number sense. Okay, hopefully you've unpaused. You can see on this first one they went 98 plus 235, but here they only did 2,343. So that means this one must be 100, which is a great way to add that question on the right if you were doing it in your head. 415 plus 289 is the same as what plus 300? Well, they added 11 on to the second number, so I must have to take 11 off of this number, so that would leave me at 404. Sorry, that just doesn't write well. You get the gist anyways. Okay, next one, 754 plus 1995, that, oh, I'm going to take, they've taken five off this one in order to make this one 2,000. So they're just making friendly numbers and working on number sense. All right, so those are questions, again, that'll be there. I'll erase my ugly work so that you can use them if you want. If we go back to my presentation, okay, so 
Next, I'm going to move into multiplication. So if you teach K to 2, you can sign out if you want. Thanks for watching. Um, multiplication, I'm going to show you some number strings that also uh, have been shared with me. Um, here's a really fun one. So we just start with 1 times 6, which most kids could do. They'd all come up with 6. They would know it. How, what is 2 times 6? And again, some kids might not might already know this one, but if they didn't, what would be a strategy that they could get it? Well, if we knew 1 times 6, we could just double our answer in that order to get 12. Because we've doubled 1, so now we would have twice as many. Okay, next one. So I'll, what would 10 times 6 be? And they'd get their 60. So now, when we get to here, how could you use your answers above to help you get 12 times 6? Well, if you knew 10 times 6 and you knew 2 times 6, you could certainly put those answers together to get your 72. Okay, for that one. And going on from there, if you were writing on here, they would easily now be able to get 14 times 6. So if they knew 12 times 6, they'd only have to add another 12 to that one because they need another 2 times 6 added on. And you can see when you show it in that pattern, kids can get their answers. If you just throw 14 times 6 at them, maybe they couldn't. But when you put it in the string, I bet you they'll start doing it in their head. Here's another one. I don't have it all laid out nicely. I snipped it from Pam's work. But there's another num string that works very similarly. And you can use some strategies to get your answers. But there's also a right here where you see my mouse. There's a multiplication string explanation with this string and how you can do the questioning in it with other examples. So feel free to use that. Um, this is also, there's three in a row here, you guys, and I'm not going to go through all three. She did those with us, and it was amazing the things we could figure out just by using our relational multiplicative thinking as we were working through these. Um, and how we use the answers above in order to get the answers below. And things that I never thought I'd be able to do. So there you are. Feel free to use any of this, or again, if you just need more of an explanation, I try to go fast because I don't want to take much of your day, but I want to give you some things that you can walk away with. So feel free to use these little number chats, number strings with your with your kids, um, and they'll start to love them. This is a product game also that she likes, that she shared. It is on our share drive, but there's the link to it that you can use to practice multiplication. That's pretty fun as well. All right, you guys, so challenges or homework um, just keep trying some number talks number strings um, there's lots of cool stuff that you can do um, I highlighted one when I emailed you guys last Monday where I showed you the uh, the little activity that Shay Rasher had done with her West Park Elementary class so feel free to use that um, as you know there's an overwhelming amount of things you could be doing but pick something that's your favorite and you think it, pick things that you think your kids need at this moment all right, you guys, um, have a great week. As I said before, if you have any question, questions, feel free to email me or text me or call me. Um, that's my Twitter account right here on the bottom. If you want to follow me, I do post things that I see on Twitter. I've, I learned so many things on there from the math world, so feel free to do that as well. Okay, have a great week. I'm here if you need me. Take care. Bye.